أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لقد أرسلنا رسلنا بالبينات وأنزلنا معهم الكتاب والميزان ليقوم الناس بالقسط صدق الله العظيم نحمد هو ونصلي على رسوله الكريم اما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا ايها الناس اعبدوا ربكم الذي خلقكم والذين من قبلكم لعلكم تتقون الذي جعل لكم الارض فراشا والسماء بناء وانزل من السماء ماء وانزل من السماء ماء فاخرج به من الثمرات رزقا لكم فلا تجعلوا لله اندادا وانتم تعلمون صدق الله العظيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي اللهم ربنا الهمنا رشدنا واعذنا من شرور انفسنا اللهم ارنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وارنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه اللهم وفقنا لما تحب وترضى امين يا رب العالمين يا برادرز اند سيسترز السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته وي ار ناو بيجنينج ويز ذا ثرد سيكشن اوف سوره البقره يو مايت هاف نوتد that the two basic terminologies i am keeping as such i am not translating them aya or ayat it cannot be translated sura it cannot be translated but ruku i am translating into sections as i told you this terminology was not present in the times of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam as well as the days of the sahaba radhiyallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'in it was a later day addition so we can translate we can adopt another words also but please note one thing that these paras or parts you know i am translating ajza also into parts rukus sections as far as the rukus go this division seems to be very connected logically with the subject of that those ayat very clear distinction very correct distinction but as regards the paras or the parts you know it's a very what word i should say i i i can't decide but it's not at all a correct division into paras because even the surahs have been divided and we find you know at least in one place in surah al hijr one ayah is in the 13th part and the rest of the whole surah is in the 14th part so it's not a very good division but as far as the rukus are concerned the division is very correct and logical now this third section or third ruku of surah al baqarah as i told you gives us a gist or summary of the call of the quran what's the dawa of quran first of all ya ayyuhan nas note that this call is to the whole of humanity ya ayyuhan nas we must note in the makki surahs when allah subhanahu wa taala describes the history of most of the messengers of allah we find the words ya qaum ya qaum ibudullah o oh my people o oh my nation be obedient to allah serve allah be bondsmen to allah but this is the distinction between the message of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the message of the former messengers that 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 was directed to their nations only and this message is addressed to the whole of humanity ya ayuhan nas ubudu rabbakum ibadah obedience with love both things must be together 
in the to convey the sense of ibadah total obedience to someone out of extreme love for him if the obedience you know is not out of love is due to some pressure then you know it's, it's obedience only not ibadah if a nation conquers another nation that conquered nation is obedient to the conqueror but they are not doing ibadah to them the ibadah is when the obedience is total number 1 and it is from the depths of the hearts out of extreme love for someone so if someone loves allah subhanahu wa taala from the depth of his heart and as a result of that love he obe obeys him in all his all the aspects of his life then he is doing the ibadah he is fulfilling the purpose of his creation because this subject has been very extensively discussed in the bakki surahs in surah zariyat we find wama khalaqtul jinna wal insa illa liya'budun i have not created men and jinns except only to obey me to worship me to love me to be bondsmen to me to serve me this is the sole purpose of the creation of the jinns as well as the humans and we find that all the messengers of allah subhanahu wa taala they conveyed the same message to their nations ya qaum ibudullah ma lakum min ilahin ghayruh all the messengers this was the common call of all the messengers the that is the call of quran the same is the call of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam the only difference is that they were addressing their nations only and this prophecy of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam this prophethood of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is universal to the whole of humanity but the essence is the same o budullah be bondsmen to allah obey allah in all aspects of your life individual as well as collective every aspect of life should be governed by the law of allah subhanahu wa taala allazi khalaqakum who has created you he is your creator he is your rabb your sustainer o budu rabbakum be bondsmen to your sustainer to your master to your lord allazi khalaqakum and not only that he is your sustainer he is your creator wal ladina min qablikum and he created those also who were before you because people generally tend to follow their forefathers because our forefathers believed in such things we also believe in such things because our forefathers were doing like that we are also doing like that we have to follow our forefathers no they were also created by allah subhanahu wa taala just as you are the creatures of allah subhanahu wa taala they were also the creatures if you can commit mistake they, they could also commit mistake so not to follow them but you follow the directions of allah the guidance given to you by your lord your master your sustainer your creator la'allakum tattaqun the same word again taqwa so that you may become pious you may become god fearing no so that you can save yourself save yourself from the displeasure of allah save yourself from the punishment of the day of judgment save yourself from the fire of hell la'allakum tattaqun allazi ja'ala lakum al-ard who is that allah about whom you are required to obey and to be bondsman he is he allazi ja'ala lakum al-ard firashan who made this earth for you as a resting place just as a bedding you know first so he has made this earth for you as a bedding wa sama binan and then he raised the canopy of sky over you wa anzala min as sama man and he sent down water rain from the sky fa akhraja bihi and then he created from the earth brought brought out from the earth min as samarat rizqan lakum the provisions for you in the form of the fruits and the grains fala ta'alu lillahi andadan wa antum ta'lamun so don't declare don't accept with allah anyone as rival as equal nobody is equal to allah nobody is like allah nobody is rival to allah the bondsman you have to be for him only nobody else all humans are equal kunu ibad allah akhwana you should be all bondsmen to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and brothers to each other want to ta'lamun at least you don't do it knowingly maybe a person is mistaken and mistakenly he is doing something that is something else but knowingly 
intentively, with intentions at least, you shouldn't do it. وَإِن كُنْتُمْ فِي رَيْبِ اللَّهُ We find in these two ayat the essences of Tawheed. Don't declare or accept anybody, anything equal to Allah, rival to Allah. This is Tawheed. And the amali Tawheed, the practical Tawheed, be bondsman to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Obey Him, worship Him, love Him, and serve Him from the depths of your heart. This is the basic call of the Qur'an. Now the second article of faith is Risala, messengerhood, prophethood. And about the prophet of Muhammad sallallahu now we find these two ayat. وَإِن كُنْتُمْ فِي رَيْبٍ مِمَّا نَزَّلْنَا عَلَىٰ عَبْدِنَا If you are really in some doubt about that thing which we have sent down on our bondsman, on our servant Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, if you are doubtful about it, if you think that maybe that he is composing these surahs himself and he is saying that these have been revealed to me from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you have any doubts, if you have real doubts, then you also can produce, if you can, try to produce one surah like this Quran. I am keeping the word same, one surah. Mimmislihi, like the surahs of Qur'an. And as you know, the surahs are very small also. There are three surahs comprising of three ayat only. So the challenge goes to that extent. If you can comprise and compose a surah consisting of three ayat only, and if you can claim that this is equal to Qur'an, this is like Qur'an, this is at the same level, it's of literary level as that of Qur'an, then you know you will have some right to doubt the, the authenticity of Qur'an, whether Muhammad is himself composing them, or actually they have been revealed to him by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you call all your witnesses and helpers. Accept Allah. Accept Allah all the jinns, because you know there were kahins among them, and they had the jinns with them. So they could also get the help from the jinns. Then they had the very big orators in Arabia. Then the poets. They were very proud about their literature, about their poetry. They thought we are the biggest orators. So you call all the people whom you can call in Kuntum Sadatin if you are really true, if you are truthful. What does it mean? It means that you really don't doubt it. It's only you saw is a, 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 an explanation that you are giving forth. It's nothing. You really don't doubt that this is, the, this is not the kalam of Allah. Your hearts have accepted that this cannot be composed, this Qur'an, by any human being. It's only your verbal, you know, argument that you are presenting. Otherwise, lame excuses that you are presenting. Otherwise, you don't actually believe from the depths of your heart that this is from Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That is why it's Quran says, in kuntum sadiqeen. If you are true in your objection, in your doubts, then come and have, you know, then try to compose one surah, even one surah, or like that, the surah of Quran. Fa'il lam tafalu. And then if you can't do it, if you don't do it, wa lam tafalu. This is very important. The emphasis, the confidence with which Quran is saying, you will never be able to do it. It's a miracle in itself that nobody challenged that we have some poet amongst us who can compose three lines just like Surah Al-Asr or Surah Al-Nasr or Surah al Qasr. Nobody, nobody challenged. Nobody came forward to accept this challenge of the Quran. And Quran says it preemptively. And if you don't do it, if you don't accept the challenge, if you don't try to produce something like Quran, and you will never be able to do it. Then you should try to save yourself. Be fearful of the fire of hell, whose fuel would be men as well as stones. Why stones? Because they used to worship, their idols were made of out of stone. That you will be thrown in the fire of hell, these idols, you know, these gods of yours, 
they will also be thrown with you in the same hell, in the same fire of hell. وَقُودُ هَلْنَاسُ وَالْحِجَارَةُ وَعِدَّتْ لِلْكَافِرِينَ And that has been prepared for the disbelievers. وَبَشَّرِ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلِ الصَّالِحَاتِ Now, in addition to the Iman bil Risala, there we find now Iman bil Akhirah. Because this Jahannam, fire of hell, is a matter concerning Akhirah. When the mention of hell came, now side by side, the mention of Jannah, the mention of heaven is also coming. وَبَشَّرِ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ And O Muhammad Wasallam, give good tidings to those who come to believe. And then they perform good deeds. أَنَّ لَهُمْ جَنَّاتٍ تَجْرِي مِنْ تَعْتِ الْأَنْهَارِ That for them there are those gardens underneath which rivers will be flowing. كُلَّمَا رُضِقُوا مِنْهَا مِنْ سَمَرَةِ الْمِسْقَدِ Whenever they will be given some fruit of that garden for their food. قَالُوا هَذَا الَّذِي رُضِقْنَا مِنْ قَبْلُ They will say, this is the same thing that we were being given before this. Well, what does it mean? That the fruit of Jannah, fruit of heaven will be in form and shape. They will be like the fruit of this world. The grapes of this world, the pomegranate of this world, all these things, you know, the dates of this world. But you know, the taste of these very fruits of Jannah will be absolutely different. No comparison. Utubihi mutashabiha. They will be given things which will be compared to each other, resembling each other. Walahum fiha azwaju mutahharatun. And for them there will be wives, or some people have translated spouses. Wives for men, husbands for women. There will be spouses, mutahharatun, who will be free from all evil. Mutahharatun wahum fiha khalidun. And they will remain in them forever, forever, everlasting. Now these are the three articles of faith to which Qur'an is calling. This is the basic call of the Qur'an. Have belief in Allah and His oneness, unity of Allah. And obey Him from the depths of your heart in all aspects of your life. Believe in Qur'an, believe in the prophethood of Muhammad wasallam, And His biggest miracle is Qur'an. And if you have any doubts, well, accept the challenge of Qur'an. Come and compose even one surah just like Qur'an. And if you can't do it, and you will not be able to do it, so then you should fear the fire of hell. And then you know there is the good tidings for those who believe in Allah and, good, and they do good deeds. Now, some missionary uh, problems or phenomena. إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَسْتَحِيَّ يَدْرِبَ مَسَلًا مَا بَعُوضَةً فَمَا فَوْقَهَا Verily, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not ashamed to set forth a parable, even of a mosquito. When you have to give a parable or a simile, actually it doesn't matter with what thing you are comparing anything. There should be some similarity, some resemblance, because always a similitude or a parable is given to explain something with relation to some another thing which is known already to a person. So there should be a connection, logical relationship between the two. Not that something should be great. If you are going to give an example for something great, then something great is to be mentioned. If you are going to give an example for something which is very small, then something small is to be mentioned. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not ashamed of giving examples even of mosquitoes. What to speak of something more, if it is greater or smaller than that thing. Why this has been discussed? Because you know all these things, the punishments in heaven and the, what are the blessings in the, in the, the punishment in the hell and the blessings of heaven, you know. Wordings are the same which we use here. Nar, fire. But that fire of hell is not like the fire of this world. There is no comparison. In the same way, the things which we know here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given the names of the Jannah also in the same way. But, the, but there is a world of difference between the essence of both the things. Names are the same. So these are, so to say, similitudes. These are parables. 
ان اللہ لا يستحي ان يضرب مثلا ما بعوضه فما فوقها فما الذين امنوا فيعلمون انه الحق من ربه سو دوز پیپل ہو بلیو دے نو دے کم ٹو نو فار شور دیٹ دس از حق دس از ٹرو فرام دیئر لارڈ بیکاز اٹ از ایکچولی ود ان ہیومن بینگز دیئر روح دیئر اسپرٹ وچ ٹیسٹیفائز دیٹ دس تھنگ از کریکٹ سو ہم الذین امنوا فیعلمون انه الحق من ربه دے ڈونٹ سی that what words are been used in a simile they they look to the essence of their simile or similitude and then they immediately come to the conclusion that verily it is from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa amma alladhina kafaru fa yaquluna madha arad allah bi hadha masala and those who have denied who has refused to accept who has who have declared to be kuffar they say they object to it madha arad allah bi hadha masala what has allah intended by this parable or by this similitude yudillu bihi kaseeran wa yahdi bihi kaseera it is in this way that allah subhanahu wa taala guides many people towards right and misguides others towards wrong yudillu bihi kaseeran with this very quran allah subhanahu wa taala misleads many people according to their intentions because their intentions were not pure so from quran also from these parables of the quran also they get something they get misguided in spite instead of getting the guidance to the right path they are misguided they add to their misguidance from quran also because their intentions were not correct and this is explained in the next ayah wa yahdi bihi kaseera and but those people who intentions are correct who are muttaqin who want to save themselves from wrong and error and falsehood and who want to save themselves from the fire of hell they get the guidance from this quran wama yudillu bihi illal fasiqin and allah doesn't mislead or misguide except those who are rebellious in nature fisk means you know a rebellious nature who are in rebellion against allah subhanahu wa taala only them allah misguides as i said it is based on the intentions on the, on their own in inclinations if the inclination is bad towards wrong allah subhanahu wa taala will mislead him if the inclination intention is correct if he is sincere is in intention then allah will guide him who are those fasiqin the rebellious people disobedient people alladhina yanqudun ahd allah min ba'd ma saqihi who break allah's covenant after accepting that that covenant will be discussed in surah al-araf that when we were in the form of spirits only or you may call souls only there were no bodies allah created all human beings but in the form of spirits only and from those about which the prophet has been has said in one of the ahadith al arwahu junudun mujaddada those spirits were like armies you know all the human beings which were to come in this world till the doomsday the spirits of all were created at one time and then allah subhanahu wa taala took a covenant from them alastu bi rabbikum qalu bala this will be discussed in surah al araf am i not your lord your master and they said yes why not we accept you as our lord our sustainer our master this covenant you know every human being has come has done and confirmed with allah subhanahu wa taala has ratified with him this treaty before coming to this world so actually those people who are rebelling against their covenant after making it after ratifying it after accepting it wa yaqtaruna ma amara allah bi ayyu sala and they cut what allah subhanahu wa taala has has ordered or decreed to be joined for example you know the relations parents and and you need the offsprings the brothers brothers and sisters now this the kith and kin this relationship should be maintained it should be respected but they are breaking and cutting these relations wa yaqtauna ma amara allah bi ayyu sala wa yufsiduna fil ard and they are doing mischief in this in this earth ulaika humul khasirun these are the people who are losers they will be the losers they will be in great loss on the day of judgment kaifa takfuruna billah a very beautiful question although it's not a question it's a sign of exclamation كيف تكفرون بالله how do you disbelieve in allah 
ہاؤ یو ریجیکٹ اللہ ہاؤ ڈیئر یو ریجیکٹ اللہ کیف تک فرون اب اللہ و کل تم اب واتن فاہیا تم اینڈ یو وٹ ڈیڈ اینڈ دین ہی ریوائڈ یو اینڈ براٹ یو ٹو لائف سما یو می تو کم دین ہی ول پٹ یو انڈر ڈیتھ ول میک یو ٹو ڈائی سما یو ہی کم دین اگین ہی ول برنگ یو ٹو لائف ناؤ دس از ایکچولی ویری بگ فلوسفیکل کوشچن آف قرآن وی ور ڈیڈ بفور کمنگ ان دس ورلڈ واٹ ڈز اٹ مین وی ور ناٹ نان ایگزسٹنٹ اے ڈیڈ تھنگ از این ایگزسٹنگ تھنگ ڈیڈ باڈی لائنگ اٹس ناٹ لیونگ ڈیڈ باڈی بٹ اٹ از نان اٹ از ناٹ نان ایگزسٹنٹ اٹ از ایگزسٹنگ سو وی ور ایگزسٹنگ بٹ ان دی اسٹیٹ آف ڈیتھ دین اللہ سبان و تعالیٰ ریوائڈ اس براٹ اس ٹو لائف دین ہی ول اگین پوٹ اس ٹو ڈیتھ اینڈ دین ہی ول اگین ریوائڈ اس ناؤ آؤٹ آف دیز تھنگز وی نو دس لائف وی نو دی ڈیتھ وچ از کمنگ آفٹر دس لائف اینڈ دین وی نو دی ریزرکشن دیٹ ول بی وی ول بی براٹ ٹو لائف اگین آن دی ڈے آف ریزرکشن بٹ دی فرسٹ تھنگ یو نو موسٹلی پیپل اگنور اٹ ایکچولی وی ور ڈیٹ وٹ ڈز مین وی ور اونلی ان دی اسپرچل فارمس بفور کمنگ ٹو دس ورلڈ اینڈ وی ور اسلیپ جسٹ ایز یو نو ان اے کول اسٹوریج آل دی سولز اسپرٹس آف ہیومن بینگ ور کریٹیڈ ایٹ ون ٹائم دین اللہ سبان و تعالیٰ ٹوک اے کومنٹ فرام دیم الس ٹو بے رب کم کالو بلا اینڈ دین پٹ ٹو پٹ دیم ٹو اسلیپ اینڈ دس اسلیپ ایکچولی از دی کنڈیشن آف ڈیتھ then you might have you might be remembering the supplication and the prayer of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam when he woke up every morning what was the prayer alhamdulillah alladhi ahyani ba'da ma amatani wa ilahi nushur all praise will to be to allah who has again brought me to life after he had put me to death and in the same way one day i shall rise from the sleep of death and will go to allah subhanahu wa taala return to him alhamdulillah alladhi ahyani ba'da ma amatani wa ilahi nushur so actually sleep is also sleeping is also like death it has something similar similarity between the two there is a similarity so we were dead what does this mean we were in the in we were asleep as spirits then allah subhanahu wa taala gave us this body in this world we came here with the soul as well as this body then we shall be we shall die the soul will return to allah subhanahu wa taala this body will return to this clay to this earth again from which it has come and then allah subhanahu wa taala will again bring us from this very clay minha khalaqnakum wa fiha nu'idukum wa minha nukhrijukum taratan ukhra so these are the stages of human life this aya has a very important philosophical connotation but this subject will be discussed you know in very clear terms in surah al ghafir or surah al mu'min that is the 24th part of of the quran who al ladhi khalaqa lakum ma fil ardh jami'a again you know a very philosophical issue it is he who has created for you whatever is on the earth very important that man is the central creation of allah subhanahu wa taala he has created this universe for man that is why there is a hadith of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam inna ma dunya khuliqat lakum wa antum khuliqtum lil akhirah this world has been created for you and you have been created for akhirah huwa alladhi khalaqa lakum ma fil ardh jami'a the same subject will continue in the next section that is why the khilafa the subject of khilafa is discussed in the next section because this this world has been created for you you are going to be the khalifa for this world for this earth so actually the same subject has been discussed here which will be discussed in full length in the next section huwa alladhi khalaqa lakum ma fil ardh jami'a thumma istawa ila as-sama then he turned towards the skies fa sawwa hunna sab'a samawat and then he divided them into seven skies wa huwa bi kulli shay'in alim and he knows everything everything is in his knowledge now the next section which i told you 
is of the utmost philosophical importance. And the basic subject, first of all, is that of caliphate. وَإِسْقَالَ رَبُّكَ لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ إِنِّي جَعَلُونَ فِي الْأَرْضِ خَلِيفَةً And just remember the time when your Lord said to the angels, I'm going to place a vicegerent on earth. قَالُوا وَتَجْعَلُوا فِيهَا مَا يُفْسِدُوا فِيهَا وَيُسْسِكُوا الدِّمَاءِ They said you will place therein those who will make mischief therein and shed blood. وَنَحْنُ نُسَبِّحُ بِحَمْدِكَ وَنُقَدِّسُ لَكُ and we, while we are glorifying you, نُسَبِّحُ بِحَمْدِكَ and praising you, وَنُقَدِّسُ لَكْ and all that is associated with that. قَالَ إِنِّي عَالَمُ مَا لَا تَعْلَمُونَ Allah said, I know what you don't know. You know, why I want to place a khalifa on earth? What is the good in it? You can't comprehend. You, have, you don't have all the knowledge. I have the knowledge. I have decided it. وَعَلَّمَ آدَمَ الْأَسْمَاءَ كُلَّهَا Now this is the position of man on earth. And the basic difference is that the modern civilization has reduced the position of man to that of an animal. No basic difference between animals and man. Only quantitative difference, no qualitative difference. A slightly more evolved animal. That's all. No difference. Why Quran says no. Man is vicegerent of Allah on earth. What a difference. What a hell of difference between the two. The, man, the position of man. Ashraful makhlukat. In different words, Quran has described it. Khalaqtuhu be yadayya. I have created this man with both of my hands. These words you will find later on in the Quran. وَلَقَدْ كَرَّمْنَا بَلِي آدَمَ وَحَمَلْنَاهُمْ فِي الْبَرِّ وَالْبَحْرِ we shall translate it in Surah Tumani Israel, inshallah. So this is the first philosophical issue that the position of man is very high. He is vicegerent of Allah on earth. وَعَلَّمَ آدَمَ الْأَسْمَاءَ كُلَّهَا Now the second issue. That the basis of this caliphate is the knowledge that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to Adam. And he taught. وَعَلَّمَ آدَمَ الْأَسْمَاءَ كُلَّهَا He taught to Adam all the names, the names of all the things. Now actually this human knowledge, you must know, it comprises of terms, terminologies, names. Man discovers some truth, some knowledge, and then he, he gives it a name. And with these names, you know, he, this human knowledge progresses. With the terminology, every science, you know, has its terminology of its own. Unless you have a full understanding, a basic understanding, a deep understanding of the basic terminology of that science, you can't comprehend it, and you can't proceed with it. So actually all human knowledge, we can say it's the knowledge of names. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave Adam the, name, the knowledge of the name of everything. Potentially, just as we say that in a seed, the whole tree is present potentially. Therefrom comes the tree. From the seed. Actually, the seed is the representative of the whole of the tree. In the same way, potentially, all human knowledge, acquired human knowledge, scientific knowledge, technology, that was actually given in potentially to Adam alayhi salatu was salam. What does it mean? Adam was given the faculties through which he could attain all this knowledge. In the sama wal basara wal fuada kullu ulaika kaana anhu masula. And this acquired human knowledge is progressing through these faculties of Adam alayhi salatu was salam. فَقَالَ أَنْبِعُونِ سُمَّ عَرَضَهُمْ عَلَى الْمَلَائِكَةِ And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed them all those things, presented those things to the angels. فَقَالَ أَنْبِعُونِ بِأَسْمَاءِ هَا أُولَائِنْ كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ And said, now let me know, you tell me the names of all these things, if you are true in what you said. If you, the objection that you raised, or the question that you raised, that should be a better uh, word. Now, if it is true, now, now you tell me the names of all these things. Qalu subhanaka la ilma lana. All of them said, glory be to you. You be glorified, subhanak. La ilma lana illa ma'allam tana. We have no knowledge except the knowledge that you gave us. And most of the 
Mufassirin, you know, they say that what it means is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to all the angels the knowledge of their own particular job. Different angels have been given different duties in this universe. And the knowledge only regarding that part of their duty, that of the universe, that knowledge is given to them, not an all comprehensive knowledge of all the things. While man was given the faculty of getting a comprehensive knowledge of everything. So that was the basic difference. Subhanaka la ilma lana illa ma'allamtana. This was true about Adam also. Adam could also know anything, couldn't know anything without Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling him the names of those things. So Allah ta'ala told him the names and that is why he could say, and you could tell the angels the names of all the things. But here the actually what the meaning is, that the knowledge, extent of knowledge of the angels is limited to the particular work or the duty assigned to them. And they, it's not comprehensive. While Adam was given the faculties through which who could get all comprehensive knowledge. In the Kantar Ali Mul Hakim, verily only you are the only person who knows everything and who is who has all the wisdom. Allah said to Adam, O Adam, you tell them their names, Falamma Abahum be Asmahim, and when he told them all the names, Kala Alam Akullakum in the Alam Ghaiba Samawati Wallar. Allah said to the angels, Didn't I tell to you, didn't I tell you that I know all the things, the all the Ghaib, all the unseen realities of the skies as well as of the earth? And I know all that you make clear and you speak out and all those things also which you had been hiding or concealing. Now this is again a very important question. Because Adam was made the vice student of Allah, now all the civil service of this divine kingdom that was put under him. Because when he is the vice student, when there was a viceroy, British viceroy in Delhi, the whole machinery, government machinery was under him. Only Allah was above Adam, and all the angels have, put, have been put under him. They have to obey him. That is why, you know, we have reached moon. No angel has intercepted our way, or no angel has come in the way. No, no, none. They have to obey us. Because we were given the faculty of knowing on, on the hidden truths of this universe, the physical laws, the laws of the nature. We are knowing one by one. We are exploiting them. And all the angels have to obey. Even if somebody is going and committing a sin, the angels don't stop him. Because he was made the vice student. And he was given the option. Imma Shakara wa Imma Kafura. He is going for committing theft. Well, let him go. Rather, you know, we can't move even an inch if these angels who are, who are you know, uh, controlling the whole of this universe, if they don't allow, we can't walk one step. But actually now all the angels, the whole civil service of this universal government has been put under Adam. And for as a symbolic, you know, phenomenon. Now they were asked and they were ordered to prostrate before Adam. And remember the time when we said to the angels, bow before Adam, prostrate before Adam. And they all prostrated. And at one place we shall find, All the angels, all of them, they prostrated before Adam. Illa Iblis. Accepting Iblis. Now here, one body can doubt, somebody can doubt that Iblis was also an angel. Because when these, these words, if we keep them before us, Fasadal Malaika, Fasadadu Illa Iblis. All the angels, they prostrated except Iblis. So it appears, apparently, that Iblis was also from the angels. It's not so. Because in Surah Al Kahfan, that is Makki Surah. It has been made clear. Kana min al jinni fa fasakana amri rabbi. He was from among the jinnat. He was a jinni. 
But you know, he was very knowledgeable, he was very pious. And because the jinns were created out of fire, and the malaika, the angels were created out of noor, light. And fire and light, they are very close to each other. In Arabic, noor and nar, they are very close in root. Noor and nar, wow and alif, and they are huruf illa. And these huruf illa, they get interchanged. So noor and nar are very close to each other. Malaika from noor. There is a hadith in Sahih of Imam Muslim, and the narrated is that Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, that Allah created the angels out of noor, out of light. And this has been given in the Quran, that the jinns were created out of fire. So actually they are very close. So this jinni, this jinn, this, he was very pious, and he was very knowledgeable, and he was very close to the angels. And so he was also supposed to prostrate along with the angels. But he, Abba was takbar awakana min al-kafirin. He refused and he took to the, to, took to pride and be, became proud of him. And he was from the, among the disbelievers and against disobedient people. Wakulna ya Adam uskulanta wadawdukal jannah. And we said to Adam, O Adam, now stay you Dwell you and your wife, Al-Jannah, in the garden. Now which garden is it? Is it the garden of heaven or it was some garden on this very earth? There is a difference of opinion. Most of the Muslim Mufassirin think that this is the heaven, some garden which was in heaven, Adam was created in the heaven, and then he was, you know, sent down to this earth. This is the general perception. But, you know, Bible, Injil says that this garden was on this very earth. And, you know, Eden, Adam, this garden of Eden, somewhere in this, this area which is now inhabited by the Kurds. This is a, an elevated, you know, area. And here they say it was a place where Adam and Hawa, and, uh, alayhi salam, were kept. But, you know, there is a difference of opinion among the Muslims also. But general opinion among the Muslims is that this was in the heavens. But it was not the heaven to which the Ahle Iman will be returned after resurrection. No. Because from that heaven, once who, someone has entered, he will never be turned out. This was some place in which Adam was placed for some time as a testing period to give him an exhibition of what was to happen with him and his progeny. Because Iblis was his enemy, he will try his hardest to take them astray, away from the right path. So it was a manifestation of this phenomenon. For this period, Adam was kept in that garden. And now you eat from this garden with pleasure and delight from wherever you like. From where, where, whichever tree you like, wala takraba hazehi shadara. But don't go near this tree. Now hazehi is, you know, with a finger pointing towards a particular tree. Quran doesn't discuss it. What tree it was? But there are different, you know, traditions and different opinions, and there's no need of going into detail, because for testing you can fix anything. You can take, you can touch everything except this. And this will be a test whether you can obey this commandment or not. Because if you touch this thing, then you have disobeyed. You are allowed to touch everything here except this thing. So actually, his shajara, so there is a pointing as if with the finger. Don't go near this tree. Fatakuna min zalimin, then you will be among the wrongdoers. Fazallahuma shaitan anha. But the shaitan, that Iblis, he made them slip, both of them. Azallah Huma, Adam and Eve, both. As shaitan, this Iblis made them slip. Fakhraja Huma Mimma Kana Fi, and he turned them out, made them turn out. Akhraja Huma, and get them out from that place or from that condition in which they were. And we said, now you go down 
from here. And you will be enemies to each other. Iblis and Adam, now they are enemies forever. Iblis was granted a very long life till the end of this world. He is living. He himself, personally, as Azil, that jinn, whom we call Iblis, whom we call Shaitan, he is living. Because we find it that he prayed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, grant me this long life and I will prove to you that Adam is not faithful to you. And Adam's progeny, most of them you will find that they will not obey you, they will not worship you. I will prove this point if you give me this long life. And that long life was given to him. So now this is the basis of all this struggle between good and bad, evil and good, and haq and batil, falsehood and reality. This is actually a war going on between Iblis and Adam, the progeny of Iblis, progeny of Adam, the agents of Iblis and the agents of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. قُلْ نَحْبِتُوا بَعْضُكُمْ لِبَعْضٍ عَدُوْ وَلَكُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ مُسْتَقَرُّ وَمَتَاوُ لِلْآخِينَ And now you, for you, in the earth, there is a place to dwell and some provisions for a time, for a time which has a limit, الْآخِينَ which will be, is it limited because this earth, life on earth will not go forever. A time will come, which we call the doomsday. This whole thing will be, you know, finished. فَتَلَقَّ آدَمَ مِنْ رَبِّهِ قَلِمَاتٍ فَاتَابَ عَلَيْهِ I told you before also that on this there was a repenting in the heart of Hazrat Adam alayhi salatu wa salam. I committed a mistake. I committed a sin. I disobeyed Allah. I, I believed this Shaitan, who is my enemy. فَتَلَقَّ آدَمَ مِنْ رَبِّهِ قَلِمَاتٍ He wanted to apologize and repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But he couldn't find words, proper words for it. So it was the mercy of Allah, the blessing of Allah, that he himself taught him the words. And those words appear in Surah Al-A'raf, inshallah we shall read. رَبَّنَا ظُلَمْنَا أَنفُسَنَا وَإِلَّمْ تَغْفِرْ لَنَا وَتَرْحَمْنَا لَنَكُونَنَّا مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ and Adam was given, and Adam received some sentences, some words from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala pardoned him on his repentance, accepted, accepted the repentance from him. Innahu huwa tawwabur rahim yaqeenan. Verily, he is the acceptor of tawbah and repentance, and he is merciful. Qul nahbitu minha jamia. And we said, now go down all of you from here. Hubut we shall find in the next section, inshallah, that it means going down from one place which is higher to a place which is lower. And this word is used for settling down also. From Bedouin life to settled life in towns and cities, this is also Hubut. This will come in Quran in the, in, in the next, inshallah, hour. قُلْ نَحْبِتُوا مِنْ هَا جَمِيعًا فَإِمَّا يَاتِيَنَّكُمْ مِنِّي هُدًا now, whenever there comes some guidance to you from me, from an tabea hudaya, so whosoever will follow and obey my guidance, fala khofun alayhim walahum yazanun, there will be no fear for them, nor shall they grieve. Wallazina kafaru wa kazabu be ayatina. As for those who disbelieve and belie our ayat, our, our signs. Now, these are two words. Kafaru, disbelieve. وَكَذَّبُوا بِلَائِ You say it is a lie. And who do, those who disbelieve and belie our ayat, أُولَائِكَ أَصْحَابُ النَّارِ They are the people of fire, هُمْ فِيهَا خَالِدُونَ And they will dwell in it forever. Now, as I told you, number one in this section we find the position of man on earth. He is the vice president of Allah on earth. He has been given the command even over the angels. All the angels prostrated before him. So he has the authority here. He can do whatever he likes. <laughs> Number three, he was given the faculties of acquiring knowledge of everything. This knowledge, you know, is going, you know, to those dimensions which are astonishing. Let me quote here a couplet from Allama Iqbal. عروج آدمِ خاکی سے انجم سہمے جاتے ہیں 
کہ یہ ٹوٹا ہوا تارا بہ کامل نہ بن جائے دس مین کریٹڈ آف کلے ویئر ایئر گوئنگ ویئر ایئر ریسٹ ایکچولی اٹ از آؤٹ آف دیٹ نالج دیٹ فیکلٹی آف نالج ایکوائرڈ نالج بٹ ان دی اینڈ از دی مینشن آف دی ریویلڈ نالج اما یاتی کم منی ہودن سو دیز آر ٹو ٹائپس آف نالج ون از دی ایکوائرڈ نالج دی سائنٹیفک نالج دیٹ وی ایکوائر تھرو اور سینسز اور انٹلیکٹ اور ریزننگ دی ادر از دی گیون نالج دی ریویلڈ نالج وچ کمس تھرو ریولیشنس انسپریشنس تھرو امبیا تھرو پروفٹس دیز بکس آف اللہ سبحان و تعالی دس از دی سیکنڈ نالج العلم و علمان دیز آر دی ٹو ٹائپس آف نالج وچ وی شوڈ انڈرسٹینڈ ڈسکریٹلی سیپریٹلی فرام ایچ ادر ون نالج از ایکوائرڈ تھرو دوز فیکلٹیز وچ ور گیون ٹو آدم علیہ السلاۃ والسلام اینڈ دی ادر نالج از گیون تھرو وہی تھرو دی پروفٹس اینڈ میسنجرز آف اللہ سبحان و تعالی سو ان دی بگننگ واز دی مینشن آف دی فرسٹ نالج اینڈ دی ان دی اینڈ آف دس سیکشن از دی مینشن آف دی سیکنڈ نالج فائم ما یاتی ان نقم انی ہدن فمن تب یا ہدا یا فلا خوف علیہ ولاح یاسلون ولزین کفر و کزب و بیاتنا الا کا صاحب اللہ رحفیا خالد ناؤ ہیئر دی فور فرسٹ سیکشن آف دس سورا دے ہیو بین کمپلیٹیڈ آئی ٹولڈ یو دے آر تب ہی دی دے آر پریمنری ڈسکشن ناؤ اسٹارٹ دی سیکشن آف ٹین کنٹینیوس سیکشن آف دس دس سورا which in which we have we find a direct address to bani israel the former muslim ummah out of these 10 sections or 10 rukus you can divide them into two now this analysis is very important because you can keep these things you know in your mind through this analysis the first section comprising of seven ayat is very important because this is the section of dawa bani israel are being called to accept the message of the prophet of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam but from the second or you we should say from the sixth section till the 15th or the 14th that is actually a you should so to say charge sheet a continuous charge sheet against that ummah you did this thing wrong you did this thing wrong you broke the covenant here you broke the promises with allah there and you created new things in in your deen you are having wishful thinking about the akhira all these things you need a continuous charge sheet against them on the basis of which they were deposed from that position which was held by them for 2000 years being the representatives of allah on earth and then you know the ummah of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was to be installed in the place of that former ummah so now this section inshallah we shall read and that is seven ayat which are very important یا بنی اسرائیل اذکروا نعمتی اللتی انعمت علیکم واوفوا بعهدی اوف بعهدکم ویا یا فرحمون او سنز اف اسرائیل بنی اسرائیل سنز اف اسرائیل او چلڈرن اف اسرائیل اسرائیل از ایکچولی دی لقب ٹائٹل اف حضرت یعقوب علیہ الصلوۃ والسلام ان ہیبریو لینگویج اسرائیل مینز عبد اللہ بونز مین اف اللہ اسرائیل ایل از فر اللہ Isr is for Abd. So Abdullah in Israel, they are the same. Abdullah in Arabic, Israel in Hebrew. Ya Bani Israel, askuru ni'mati yallati anamtu alaykum. O sons or children of Israel, remember my favor which I bestowed upon you. And fulfill your obligations of my covenant, so that I fulfill my obligations of your covenant with you. یا بلی اسرائیل اذکر کو نعمت یہ اللہ تعالیٰ تو علیکم واؤفو بے عہدی اوف بے عہدی کم و یا یا فرحمون اینڈ فیئر نبڈی ایکسپٹ می ناؤ دس از دی کال گیون ٹو بلی اسرائیل وٹ واز دی کامنٹ دیٹ وی شیل ریڈ ان آیا نمبر ون ففٹی سیون آف سورت العراف دیٹ دے ور حضرت موسا علیہ السلام ہی پریڈ فار مرسی فار دی فار ہز نیشن فار ہز پیپل بلی اسرائیل فار ایور Allah said my real mercy will be reserved for those of you who will believe in Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam an nabiyul ummi an rasul an nabiyul ummi who will come to them and about whose signs there will be mention in Torah with them whosoever will believe in him and help him then actually the best mercy will be reserved for those people afu bi ahdi now you must fulfill the obligation that you made the covenant with me 
so that I fulfill my part of the covenant. وَآمِنُوا بِمَا أَنزَلْتُ مُصَدِّقًا لِمَا بَعَكُمْ And believe in what I have sent down, that is Qur'an, مُصَدِّقًا لِمَا بَعَكُمْ which testifies and confirms that which is with you. It is confirmed. Qur'an confirmed that Torah was given to Hazrat Musa alayhi salatu was salam. It is a divine book. It was given. It is divine guidance. So it is, conf it is confirming that which is with you. وَلَا تَكُونُوا أَوَّلَا كَافِرٍ بِهِ and don't become the first kafirs and disbelievers. You know, you should be the first to believe. You should be the first to accept him. Not to deny him. Not to refuse to accept him. وَلَا تَشْتَرُوا بِآيَاتِ سَمَنًا قَلِيلًا And don't purchase and don't accept very tiny prices, very low price for what I have given you for these ayat, سَمَنًا قَلِيلًا وَإِيَّا فَتَّقُونَ and have fear only of me. وَلَا تَلْبِسُ الْحَقَّ بِالْبَاطِلِ And don't mix falsehood with truth. Now, تَلْبِسُ الْحَقَّ Libas. What is libas? It is actually covers our bodies, our, our dress. So you cover the reality by something which is false. This Quran is real. The Prophet of Hood of Muhammad Sassam is real. And now you are trying to cover it with some false allegations. Don't cover haq, real reality with batil, with falsehood. And don't try to conceal reality. Knowingly, when you know, you have, you have recognized Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Due to his qualities that were mentioned in Torah, you have, you have come to know that he is the, the Prophet, the last Prophet. And you are trying to, to, to hide and conceal this truth. Wa'antun ta'alamun, don't do it knowingly. Wa'aqimu salata wa'atu zakah. And establish the prayers. These have all been, you know, all the sharia that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave to any of his messengers. The integral part has been salah. You must have some prayers. Although the forms have been different. Then rules and regulations have been different. Number of prayers have been different. But it has been an integral part of all divine sharias that there was namaz, there was salah, waqimu salah, waatu zakah, and pay the charity that is compulsory charity. And bow before Allah along with those who are bowing. Now, this is actually a very good, you know, pointing towards the Muslims. You see the Muslims. In this very city, you are dwelling in Medina. In your own city now, Muhammad and his companions, they are prostrating before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a congregation. Go, go and join this congregation. They are making ruku, they are making sajda, they are prostrating, they are bowing before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why are you keeping away? Do you enjoin and order people towards goodness, good virtue, and you just forget yourselves. All the sermon is for others, not for you. All the good, th good things and good deeds are for others, not for you. And you, and you are reading the book, book of Allah. This character of yours, how it is absolutely opposite, contradictory. To the book of Allah that you read and you believe in. Afala taqilun. Don't you understand? Fastainu bis sabre was salah. And seek help with patience and prayers. Wa indaha la kabiratun. And these prayers, it's definitely very hard. Except on those, illa ala al khashayim, who have really submitted themselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah zira yazunun anahum mulaku rabbihim. Those who believe that they will have to meet their Lord, وَأَنَّهُمْ إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ and that they have to return to Him anyhow. بارك الله لي ولكم في القرآن العظيم ونفعني وإياكم بالآيات والذكر الحكيم. الله أكبر The Islamic Organization of North America, IONA, 
is an organization dedicated to reviving the Quran into the hearts of Muslims while bringing its message to non-Muslims. The obligations of a Muslim as ordained by the Quran and Sunnah can be understood as having four levels. One, a Muslim is required to develop real faith and conviction, Iman, in one's heart. Two, a Muslim is required to live a life of complete submission to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Three, a Muslim is required to propagate and disseminate the message of Islam to humanity as a whole. Four, a Muslim is required to try his utmost in establishing the just Islamic order. The first and foremost objective of establishing Iona is to assist the Muslims in North America to uphold and implement these obligations first on themselves, their families, inform their friends, and then to invite the non-Muslims to Islam. The ultimate goal is to seek Allah's pleasure and salvation in the hereafter. For more information about Iona, please visit us at www.tanzim.us. You may also email us at info at tanzeem.us or call our toll-free number 866-779-IONA. Join us. Together we can make a difference.